in a competition to be an advocate and a spokeswoman, a woman who won't speak has no purpose. Hello everybody and welcome back. I am the Sovereign and this is my court. If this is your first time in attendance, welcome. Please consider hitting the subscribe button before you leave our kingdom. Now, the Miss Universe season has come to a conclusion. We are on our lovely breaks right before we restart the whole situation all over again. Don't you just love the pageantry cycle? Very excited. We get new queens, new women, new performances, new coaches, new powerhouses. Like there's a lot coming in these next few months, but I came across an insider article featuring the previous Miss Universe Russia, who we just saw compete in January. And she was detailing some of the unique hardships that she faced during her time as a competitor. Now to catch some of you up, if you don't know the backstory of this, how could you not? But that's why you have me as a friend. I have done a few videos discussing and detailing the situation occurring between Russia and Ukraine. I've talked about it on Instagram Live. I've sent out tweets about it, I've generally kept the court up to date because you guys know that I love it when you're educated because then we can engage in intelligent conversation over here. My court is very unique like that. I love you guys for that. So we've been discussing and keeping an eye on the situation. Now, several international big organizations, I'm talking the Olympics, I'm talking FIFA, decided that once Russia attacked Ukraine, which is not in the spirit of international cooperation, they removed Russia from the ability to participate in international sporting events until the situation was resolved. Right now, Russia doesn't even wanna acknowledge the fact that they're in what is an actual war with Ukraine. They call it, they're still calling it like military action because they don't wanna use the terminology of warfare. But a lot of the international community justifiably took up for Ukraine and said, hey, why are you picking on this country? Like, leave them alone. And I know, look, if you guys wanna get at me for the political situation from someone who studies and loves political science, you know I hold Privy Council. We can discuss the politics for those of you who really wanna talk about it, talk about NATO and the whole situation. The point is, when it came to international sporting events, because this was not the behavior of a sportsman-like country and you are creating issues with other countries, certain countries don't feel like you should be able to participate in these international sports that are meant to bring countries together. It's meant to foster peace and camaraderie. You're totally against that. So FIFA and the Olympics and many other organizations banned Russia from international sporting events until this war with Ukraine came to an end. When I was having these discussions and bringing it up on YouTube, a couple of the pageant fans asked me, well, if you support Russia being barred from the Olympics, which I outwardly said that I, of course I did, and you support FIFA's decision, which is, I mean, it's FIFA, but I'm even supporting them for God's sakes. And they're like the international football mafia, okay? <laughs> but I'm supporting them. They're like, if you're supporting these other organizations, would you also support Miss Universe and Miss Supranational and Miss Grand International if they were to bar Russia as well? And I said, absolutely, they should. Absolutely they should. One, it is within keeping with the other international sporting federations. Olympics and FIFA are much bigger than MUO ever will be. So they should have followed the example of bigger organizations in order to foster that camaraderie and respect from the public. But MUO, honestly, pageantry is just not good with PR. They're not. But along with keeping with international sentiment, which remains unchanged, I also publicly told people of the actual danger that could be put upon the contestant coming from Russia in the current situation of her country. Ironically, I had to retweet myself so that people remembered what I said because at the time when I said that Russia shouldn't be allowed to compete, some people were like taken aback and they're like, well, that's not fair to the girl, that's not fair, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, guys, when it comes to international sport, you're not representing yourself. You're representing your nation. You're representing your country. We did not bar James, John, and Bill from competition. We barred the country that they wear across their chest. Now back to Miss Russia, I was very concerned that she could face backlash, that she could face manipulation by her country, that the other girls would shun her or not be nice to her. There was a lot of danger posed to that competitor that I said very, very early on in Miss Universe season. 
So now I come across this insider article, which we will thoroughly go through together, where she is discussing the exact ramifications that I was afraid would be put upon her all these many months ago. Now you guys know I do love an educational moment. I love education. I love it when we can better ourselves, better the pageantry community that we love, better ourselves as fans. Like I love, you guys know how much I love an educational topic done in like a fun way, right? <laughs> Once again, I do think there's a lot to be learned from the situation from this woman. And I still think that there are some very obvious misconceptions that are happening amongst the women competitors themselves. There are certain things that they clearly still seem to not understand about the job that they have applied to. So let's get into the insider article because there's tea. Miss Russia said the Miss Universe pageant was very difficult and that she continues to receive threats from Ukrainian social media users as a result of her participation in the competition. The 71st annual Miss Universe pageant was held in New Orleans, Louisiana, and the final competition took place on January 14th. Arbany Gabriel, who was representing the USA, won the competition after facing allegations of rigging when she won the Miss USA pageant. I still have some things to say about the Miss USA situation. Now you guys know I was never one of those people who ever disputed Arbany's win and you know I predicted her as the winner. It was never anything to do with that or Arbany herself. That's why I was like in my video, I was like, girl, you better be on a beach sipping a cocktail. That discussion had nothing to do with her. But now that Arbany has won, justifiably, obviously, <laughs> now that she's won, I feel like there's a very important conversation about the Miss USA organization being overshadowed. And there are some women taking heat that really shouldn't be. And I have a problem with that too. So I'm warning the fan base that I'm coming because I'm not happy with the treatment that I have seen thrown against the former Miss USA contestants who do not deserve it because their concerns are valid. And those of you on my Patreon who have seen the video of why I chose not to compete know very well why. And a lot of you on the Patreon know very well why I'm coming because people are attacking the Miss USA contestants and they do not deserve it. So we will have a further discussion about the USA girlies. I'm coming for that. Back to Miss Universe Russia. I do not sanction anyone ever for any reason receiving death threats. Number one, it's immoral. Why would you do that? Number two, if you truly wanted to be mean, like actually very evil, you would never wish death upon your enemies. You wouldn't. Death is the easy way out. Wish them a long and miserable life. That's what you do. You guys are amateurs, obviously. Don't like going around and wishing death upon people. Number one, girls should never be taking it seriously because why would you? You know better, you're a competitor. You should know better. That is, that's just, look, keyboard warriors, you shouldn't be batting an eye at them even if their, their behavior is reprehensible, which in this case, it truly is. In an interview with Evening Moscow published Tuesday, Miss Russia, Anna, I'm sorry, Anna, I can't say your last name because I am bad at pronouncing things. I admit my faults, okay, and I don't get mad about it. I'm bad. She said she faced a continuous stream of insults and threats from Ukrainian social media users during the competition and even faced negative comments from longtime acquaintances from Ukraine. She did not specifically mention the war between Russia and Ukraine during her interview with The Evening Moscow but she appeared to imply she was shunned because of the ongoing conflict between countries. My dear, yes, you were. And this is exactly what I was worried about happening to this young woman. I knew what was coming and honestly, she should have known what was coming. So we're gonna get into the fact that she's acting very naive to be an international competitor. But of course the other girls shunned you. When your job is to be a spokeswoman, when your job is to speak and you refuse to speak on the most pertinent issues regarding the country from which you represent, of course the women are not going to want to be around you when you have nothing to say. I don't understand how the girls still don't get that this is not just a funsies competition. This is not something to just boost your Instagram numbers. This is not something just to get you notoriety. This is a job. You are at a week long job interview to be a figurehead and a spokeswoman, okay? 
That is your job. And you are a spokeswoman on behalf of the country you wear across your chest. Because I've said many, many, many times, you're not there to represent you. People don't know your name. They call you by your country's name. And you are there as a representative of that country, the same as every or any political diplomat around the world. So what does it look like when a spokeswoman, right? A media person does not have anything to say for or against the country that she's supposed to be speaking for. That is the base level. Minimum requirements to be a spokeswoman is to speak. So when you refuse to, what do you think the other women are going to do? The other women would have embraced her with open arms if she was had the conviction to stand on her own two feet and say, you know, I don't support my government. My government is in the wrong. My government this, I can't support that. Or vice versa, we could at least still have a little bit of respect for her if she could stand there on her own two feet and say, hey, I support my government. Like, yes, me personally, I wouldn't support that rhetoric, but I could support the fact that at least she believes in something. What we have in front of us is a woman who clearly believes in nothing. She's there for the face, the publicity, to gain some notoriety for her own selfish reasons, but she's not there to make a difference because she had the chance and she chose silence. And I understand that everybody's gonna be like, well, the Russian government is dangerous. She could face ramifications. And I'm like, yes, I know. And so does she. She knew the job that she applied to. She knew the requirements to wear that sash. She knew what she was in for. She knew she was going to walk into an interview panel and they were going to ask her about the situation regarding her country, the country that she represents, wears across her chest. Arbany got those questions in interview, asking her directly about her controversy. What do you think would have happened if she sat there and said no comment? As a spokeswoman for the United States of America, she had nothing to say about the ongoing controversy regarding her national pageant. And Miss Universe always has something to say, even in the face of a disrespectful like question that shouldn't even be given to her, she will still shut that question down with words and class. It will never just be a simply no comment or a walk away. Miss Universe's work like that. That's why I get really irritated when other women have nothing to say because you're not doing your job, sweetheart. Continuing on, and many others avoided me and shunned me simply by learning about my origin, she continued. The girls from Ukraine and Switzerland simply ran from me like fire. Yes, boo-boo. Because if you're not going to speak out in defense of the deaths of their families, you are an adversary. They don't know if they can trust you. They don't know where you stand because you refuse to speak. And going off of what I was saying earlier, how do you not understand the job for which you applied? The job when you go to a national pageant for, to win Miss Russia, Miss USA, Miss Canada, Miss Brazil, whatever, that job entails that you are the national spokeswoman, that you are going to represent your country with dignity and intelligence and respect. It is required of you to be a spokeswoman and that is what Miss Universe is looking for. They're looking to hire you for a spokeswoman position. Anna knowingly applied to be the spokeswoman of Russia, knowing the current situation in that country and knowing that Russia is currently in what is a PR nightmare. She knew stepping in the, into that position to be Russia's spokeswoman, where all this international attention is negatively affecting that country right now, there was going to be questions. There was gonna be lots of people wanting conversation. She willingly stepped into that knowing what was coming for her. When you do that willingly, I would expect that you have some sort of plan or readiness to attend to the situation at hand because you stepped in the mess freely of your own volition. You should have been well prepared for what was coming for you. And I know some people down in the comments section are gonna say, well, she had no choice. She had to represent her country. She had to, she had to, it's not fair, whatever. If, Let's say it's the 1950s, the 1960s, somewhere in that decade, the United States government asked me to represent the United States in, inter in international pageantry or something. Me as a black woman in the 1950s, 1960s, represent the United States. Would I do it? Sure I would. Absolutely I would. The thing is, I would not step into that position and allow that organization to silence me. If being appointed a representative meant controlling my speech, I would not represent the United States because for those of you who do not understand what was happening in the United States around that time, that was the heart of the civil rights movement within the United States. That was the time in the United States where it was legal and encouraged in many states to kill black people freely. 
not only discriminate against them, I'm talking hang them at your family picnic as part of some sort of entertainment. That's what was happening during that era. Now imagine me being the United States representative and having nothing to say about the ongoing massacres happening against my own people, but then acting oblivious or shocked when my own people turned against me because I had nothing to say on their behalf. The audacity of me to sit up here and be a representative and spokeswoman, but not speak on behalf of the people that need it the most in my country. Not only would the other competitors shun me, my own people would shun me. And this is where I can just, I can have the backs of the competitors and saying that they're not running from Anna because they're afraid of her for any reason. There's nothing to fear from the girl herself. It's just the fact that there's no respect. I personally can say, I do not respect women that lack conviction. I don't respect women who are fraudulent. Miss Universe is a place where a lot of women that have hopes and dreams and something to say and a difference to make, that's where they come to gain their power. But when we suss out the few of you who are only there for selfish personal gains, for a bump in your Instagram numbers, who are there to just smile and be a pretty face and wear a crown, we don't respect you. I don't like women like that because it's kind of two-faced. It's kind of fraudulent. You're there to put on a facade of caring about the organization, of caring about making a difference, but you don't truly care about making a difference because if you, if you actually cared when we presented you with the opportunity to do so, you did nothing. You kept quiet. Anna could have went out of her way to go even have a conversation with Miss Ukraine or found a way to show some sort of support for this girl. But, and we'll continue in, in the article, the only thing, the only time that Miss Russia reached out to Miss Ukraine was to take a simple photo, likely for PR purposes, which I think Miss Ukraine was correct in that assumption. Russia is all about maintaining their public persona. That's why Russia is so hardcore pressed when it comes to like Olympic events and whatnot. That's what is called a soft power in international political science study. Countries still exude power through other avenues outside of militaristic power. And Russia is one country that really harnesses soft power in their sporting events. They bring their country together in regards to sports. That's how they keep their people motivated and keep everyone patriotic. It's a lot of, that propaganda means a lot to Russia. So even that simple photo is a part of Russia propaganda, which I really don't think Miss Ukraine should have taken that photo, but we'll get there. Continuing on, she went on to say that it was a pity Miss Ukraine, Victoria, didn't want to speak to her because she was Russian. I tried to make contact, but all efforts were in vain. Everyone saw Victoria's demonstrative behavior. This is her choice and I do not hold a grudge, she said. Victoria didn't want to talk to you because you didn't have anything to say. What were you going to say? You weren't going to offer her condolences. You weren't going to stand up for her country. You weren't going to say anything. So what is your purpose here? What is your purpose here? I'm surprised more girls didn't ignore Miss Russia. What is your purpose here if you're going to be silent? In a competition to be an advocate and a spokeswoman, a woman who won't speak has no purpose. But Miss Ukraine previously spoke to the Daily Beast about struggling to compete alongside Miss Russia, telling the outlet that Miss Russia only approached her for a selfie. Until the very last moment, I hoped that Miss Russia would come up to me and say sorry, but she only came up to me to get a selfie for what I think were propaganda purposes, Miss Ukraine told the Daily Beast. Miss Russia did not say a word about the war. People told me it would be dangerous for her, and that I understand. But in that case, why would you enter the competition? Why would you enter the competition to support a country that you truly inside don't support? That is the lack of conviction. That is weakness. And I don't respect that. And a lot of other women don't respect that. If I was going to have to be silenced in order to be a competitor, I would choose not to be a competitor because my personal convictions and morality is stronger than that. I'm not going to join a pageant for selfish gain. I'm not going to do that. But clearly Miss Russia is willing to do that. And other women are obviously going to see that. Miss U Ukraine is obviously going to call her on the BS and be like, you're only here for propaganda purposes. You don't want to talk to me. You just want this picture to serve yourself. It's very self-serving. Of course, the other competitors avoided you. 
Miss Ukraine also told the Daily Beast she thinks the Miss Universe organization underestimated the toll it would take on her to compete alongside Miss Russia. I agree. And we had this discussion when we discussed Miss Grand International trying to make these girls roommates. This is not a game, okay? And I understand that some of these organizers are so far removed from the disaster that is the Ukrainian-Russian war right now that they just can't comprehend anything beyond the web page that they saw with military tanks rolling down a street. These, this woman, these competitors from Ukraine, they're being bombed the day before they have to fly out to competition. They're in fear for their families' lives and safety while they're in their hotel rooms preparing to get on stage. They don't know if they're gonna come home to dead family members after the competition. And people treat this like it's not a big deal. When people are like, but it's not the representative's fault. No, it's not the representative's fault. I have nothing against Anna herself, except for the fact that she does lack conviction and has a little bit of selfish reasonings. I think she joined the Miss Universe organization for her own selfish gain and notoriety. That I hold against her, but the Russian war and government actions are not her fault. The problem is her willingness to represent a country like that and choose not to sympathize with her fellow competitors who are supposed to be her sister queens. Still remember, this is a women's empowerment thing. This is a women's empowerment organization. And Miss Russia did not have the conviction or fortitude or spine to step to Miss Ukraine and lend her a little bit of female empowerment. So I was never saying, nor have I ever said, let's ban Anna specifically or any specific person from competition, but allowing certain countries to be represented when they lack that camaraderie and friendship that is required for international competition, same as FIFA, same as the Olympics, I understand why they are barred from competition. And I think these organizers <laughs> really stop, stop playing games with these girls' lives. Like honestly, what I have seen these past, few months this past year of competition when it came from Miss Grand International and Miss Universe Organization not paying the proper respect to the situation happening in Europe right now. That's, I just, like, I understand pageantry has horrible PR, but guys, come on, have a little bit of compassion and I don't know, common sense and decency and empathy for these girls. Anna, if she didn't compete in Miss Universe, she's, she's, what, gonna not have 100,000 Instagram followers? Wow. Like, honestly, let's think about the ramifications here. What would have happened if Russia had not been allowed to compete? What truly would have been the ramifications of that? Anna's not gonna get any followers. Anna's not gonna be in a magazine. Anna's not gonna have her photo taken. That's about it. Oh, poor Anna. Poor Anna and her not having her beautiful photo. She's gonna have to pay for a photographer herself. Miss Ukraine is over here suffering like actual issues. She's like, she's fighting for her, the life of her country, her family, and herself. How are we equating the two? How are we not? I, I don't understand the lack of empathy from outsiders to not understand the situation you're putting this girl in. Death is what we're talking about. Actual death of her family, herself, and an entire country. And it's like pageantry world, from what I've seen lately, has been trivializing it in a way that I find like fictionally insane. Like, am I reading a fairy tale novel right now? Are you guys super villains? How do you not see the problems here? I am more than grateful to Miss Universe for their support, but I'm not sure the organizers understood what it felt like for me to be standing and smiling on the same stage with Miss Russia, who was wearing a red dress, the color of blood. Miss Ukraine said to the Daily Beast, speaking of Miss Russia's crown of the Russian empire costume, which is a costume meant to represent the grand empire of Russia, their grand superiority. Back in the time where Russia had an actual empire, back in the time where Ukraine did not exist. That is the costume that this girl was wearing is celebrating Ru the Russian empire that engulfed many different parts of Europe, including Ukraine at the time. And I think Miss Ukraine is 100% correct. I think the Miss Universe organization did not understand the toll it would take on her. I knew, I knew. Because I have the ability, and maybe it's being raised in a military household. Maybe it's just I'm a political science major. major maybe it's because I'm a nerd and I've been keeping track of what's happening in Ukraine and other people haven't, that they don't understand the devastation that is happening there. And then you want this Ukrainian girl to stand on stage and smile 
as if she's not going to have to return to Ukraine and wonder if her home or apartment building is still standing, if her local Starbucks is still there, if her friend up the street is alive or dead. That's what this is going on in this girl's head when she's standing on stage next to the Russian competitor who couldn't care less. Get, she no thoughts about it, nothing to say. It's not a big deal to her whatsoever. How would you feel as a person if you were forced to take like a class photo next to the person who ran over your mom and put your mom in a coma, damn near killed your mom, but everybody expects you to stand next to this person and smile, who doesn't even have the sympathy or empathy to look at you and say, I'm sorry, my condolences, I hope you're doing well, nothing, nothing at all. I have a headache like thinking about this right now. I Miss Ukraine, by the way, you're a warrior and I'm sorry that you even had to tolerate the situation. Everybody knows I have a mouth and I mean, I would have just avoided the girl too because everything in me would have just wanted to rage. Everything in me, just to sheer thought that she had nothing to say. Didn't want to pull you aside. Not, not a single undercover message of support, nothing. Nothing. I'm impressed by her self-control. Like that, to have the self-control to just know that this is a moment where you just have to walk away. Proud of you for that. I wish you hadn't taken the photo. I honestly, I wish you hadn't taken the photo. You should have kindly looked that girl in the face and said, thank you for the opportunity, but I'm going to have to reject this offer and walked away. There are very classy ways to tell people no. <laughs> there are very classy ways to tell people to go to hell. You could have did that girl. Miss Ukraine's costume was designed to look like the Archangel Michael, who is known as a protector. Speaking to Insider, Miss Ukraine said she created the concept for the costume as she watched the war in Ukraine, and it was made over the course of four months with limited supplies and candlelight. In addition, with her tension with Miss Ukraine, Miss Russia also said she feared for her safety during the Miss Universe pageant because of the harassment she received on social media. She said that when the public learned the address of the hotel where she and the other participants were staying, she received threats and was really scared for her life because there were threats of physical violence on the condition that I go on stage. Once again, reiterating the actual danger posed to having Russia compete at Miss Universe. I didn't want that girl and still don't want those women subjected to that because I knew what they were getting into. Now, yes, they should still be well prepared for what's coming given that their country is going through a PR nightmare, but that doesn't mean it's justified and it doesn't mean that they deserve it. It's not right for them to have to suffer either. And I don't want these women to be put in the position where they have to choose between their own safety or speaking up and doing what's right by their fellow competitors. Like if you don't have the strength to be able to put in that situation, you have no business representing a country in this current situation like Russia is. I don't want any of the competitors to feel uncomfortable. I don't want any of the competitors to be put in a situation where they're unprepared to handle the vitriol, the backlash, the viciousness. I don't want any Miss Universe competitor stepping into competition unprepared in any circumstance, in any part of their entire package, whether it be on stage performance, swimwear, interview, you guys know I rant and rave all the time about different elements of competition because I want women that are thoroughly prepared for what they are getting into, including what it means to represent their respective countries. You should be well aware of the, of the questions that are going to be thrown at you once you arrive. You will be subjected to the fans and the judges who are not gonna have sympathy on you. And I guarantee you they asked Miss Russia about the ongoing situation happening in her country in closed door interview. And if she had nothing to say, she's not allowed to represent Miss Universe because Miss Universe is a spokeswoman. You can never not have anything to say, no matter what it is. You better find a way to get yourself out of that difficult situation. You better find a way to talk your way out of that difficult question, but you better not ever have nothing to say. And you also have to think about the PR ramifications if Miss Universe had crowned Miss Russia, right? Because I said from jump, Miss Russia has no chance at winning unless she is the strongest competitor we've ever seen and the bravest competitor we've ever seen. She cannot be crowned Miss Universe because if you crown Miss Universe, Russia <laughs> and make her Miss Universe, you have her walking around them with the Mawad crown on, you know what's gonna happen the moment she sits down for her first interview? 
Hello, Miss Universe. I understand that you are formerly Miss Russia. Can you explain to us your viewpoint on the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine? Are you for or against it? Do you support Ukraine? Why or why not? I guarantee you that will be the first question given to a crowned Miss Universe hailing from Russia. So demanding that she speak on these issues is 100% within the bounds of the judging panel because they have to know how she's going to answer because that is the question she's going to get at every red carpet, every televised interview, every fan that catches her on the street is going to ask her that. If you are unprepared to answer those hard questions, you have no business even stepping into Miss Universe. I Honestly, the Russian organization, they don't even bother sending a competitor. They're not gonna crown her until you guys send a competitor that's willing to vocally state whether her support for or against her country, you have no shot unless you produce a woman that's willing to speak. Miss Russia told Evening Moscow she believes everything about the top 16 stage has an exclusively political context and that her inability to reach the contest's final stage didn't have anything to do with the quality of my performance. Um, okay, sweetheart, <laughs> I, I can have Miss Universe back and the judging panel because I'm not gonna let you disrespect the judging panel right now because I actually do think this judging panel was competent. Um, your skills <laughs> did not hold enough weight to get you in the top 16, period. We're gonna, we're gonna state facts because you guys know I'm honest, okay? I have said many times that regardless of the political situation, the Russian girls are like my undercover, like fave country just because every time they send me girls from Russia, they look like little dolls, little muñecas. I love them so much. They're so freaking cute. They're so beautiful, but very much like the traditional Russian doll, they're empty. They hold no substance, no conviction, no voice. Not right now, not while their country is in the situation that they're in. And as long as these women refuse to speak on the issue, it is there is no possibility that a Russian girl can be crowned. And Miss Russia is not wrong. Anna's not wrong in thinking that there are some political undertones here. She's entirely correct, which is why I tell the fan base all the time, people are like, pageantry is not political. Of course it is. Have you heard the questions that they give the girls on stage? Have you heard backdoor interview, behind closed door interview? No, because I have many times. People tell me all the time what happened in closed door interview. I've always known, okay? And you better have your politics straight because the judging panel will ax you out in a heartbeat. But the thing is, Miss Universe is still an international organization. They have to be well aware of the political circumstances that the international community is currently in and choose a woman that is strong enough to navigate those very treacherous waters. If Miss Ukraine can't even speak on her own country, how are we gonna crown you to talk about anything else happening in the world? You're not a spokeswoman, sweetheart. Clearly you can be silenced. That's not the type of woman that Miss Universe is looking for. Like I said, Arbany eloquently navigated the questions regarding her very controversial crowning. She, she wasn't taken aback by it. She wasn't shocked by it. She was well prepared because she knew people had questions about it and she handled it with dignity and grace. There is a way for the Russian competitors to do the same, but they, are, they, are, they refuse to even try. And that is why I say that lack of conviction and strength is why no one's gonna crown them and the other girls are just gonna run away. She added that it's very symbolic that both an American and a Ukrainian won nominations at the competition. Miss Ukraine did not make the top 16 either. So what are you saying? Miss Ukraine, she didn't even make the top 16. So what you complaining about, Anna? See, mm, mm. Though she did win a Spirit of Carnival award during the pageant, the award went to the contestant who embodied, embodied Carnival Cruise Line's values of fun, friendship, diversity, and inclusion, according to the company's website. Miss Russia, you knew you weren't getting that. Diversity and inclusion for Russia and friendship and friendship, you, you knew you weren't getting that. But to say it's very symbolic, the fan support of Ukraine is symbolic. Yes, absolutely. But what I'm saying is like, Anna, you didn't even try. Like Miss Russia didn't even try. So I can't really throw sympathy her way. She doesn't deserve threats of any kind, but sympathy, absolutely not. You want people to take pity on you? No, you have, <laughs> Sis, lack of a backbone. I'm sorry, but you have none. And that's why I'm like, people are still gonna be like, well, she can't because she's from Russia and the government's dangerous. Then she shouldn't have, why would you compete? Why would you even put yourself in that position if, you, if you're not ready to handle what's coming for you? That's why I say I have no sympathy. You girls who put yourselves into these national positions, who get these national crowns, this is why I don't have very much sympathy for you. 
because nobody put this on you. You chose this for yourself. You should have been well prepared for what you got yourself into. This is a job, okay? I keep saying this. I don't understand why we're still this. This is a job. You are a spokeswoman. So people researching your background, checking up on your history, going through your Twitter, Yes, you are a, an organization's representative. You are a PR agent. You are a public speaker. You are meant to be consumed by the public. So what do you look like sitting here getting baffled and frustrated for people looking at you, coming at you, asking you questions, digging into your past? That's the point. You are meant to be served on a silver platter to the public. You wanted all that attention and notoriety, right? Well, here it is. And now you're complaining that people are all up in your business, asking you all these questions when you speak about stuff. You chose the job, sis. You chose the job. So future competitors, really think about the position you're putting yourself in because as much as I love you all, I'm not taking sympathy on you either. You chose to be here. So guess what? You're gonna get all the attention you want. We're gonna talk about your dress, your shoes, your costume, your hair, your outfits, your past, your history, your everything you said in interviews, everything, everything, everything you ever posted online. We're, we're gonna devour all of it because this is what you asked for. Representatives for Miss Universe did not immediately respond to insiders' request for a comment, as they shouldn't. They shouldn't. The Miss Universe organization understands what they are looking for. They are an international organization and they are looking for a spokesmodel, okay? A beautiful woman who can speak, who has knowledge to impart to the public. A beautiful woman who is able to capture attention and keep attention and teach an audience and charm an audience. That is what Miss Universe is looking for. Miss Universe does not want controversy or bad PR, bad publicity, they don't. They do not want that and they don't want the international smoke from the public for harboring Miss Universe or Miss Russia and making her Miss Universe. Like this is <laughs> this is a business. Okay? Miss Universe is still a business and the Miss Universe crown is attached to a job. And I need everybody to remember this. I do have sympathy for the women as human beings, as you just, as people. I understand that Miss Russia was put between a rock and a hard place. She may not support her country's actions, but she can't say anything. She may fully support her country's actions, but she can't say anything. My thing is don't put yourself in that position if you aren't willing to tolerate the repercussions that you know are coming your way. I certainly have sympathy for Miss Ukraine. I think she handled it very well. And the girls that simply avoided Russia did the right thing. If you don't have anything nice to say, especially in the circumstances of competition, when you're in the hotel, when you're in the midst of competition, just avoid the girl. It doesn't really matter her feelings on the subject. She knows why you're avoiding her. And she, like, if she really wanted to reach out, she could. Like, I don't fault the girls on any of this. I can't really fault Miss Russia, though I find it hard to respect because you guys know that I like women with conviction. I like women who are willing to stand up for what they believe in. That's just how I roll. That's how me and my friends roll. Like, you can't roll in my friend group if you're not one of those girls that is popping and ready to roll because. My friends, we're ready to, we're, we go to war anytime, any day, like call us, we got you, sis. That's how we go. So I'm like, Miss Russia, I'm not sure she could fit in my friend group because you just don't roll the way we do. Like we don't care what people have to say about us. We're gonna stand up and do what's right regardless of the circumstance. So I don't know what to tell you because even people who are in my comment section right now, caping for Miss Russia, those of you down there who have been OG subscribers, go ahead and let those people know the situations I have willingly put myself in in order to do what was right, not what was easy. Because I have had sniper rifles pointed at me for weeks at a time, slept on the ground outside of the White House, next to the military, threatened to throw all of us in jail, and I still did that. In fact, I flew out there just to get myself in trouble because that's the level of conviction I felt for what I felt I needed to do. I say things about some of the Filipinas sometimes that I know is gonna make the Filipino fan base, but I would much rather be honest and do what's right rather than do what's easy. And I'm I'm happy that, you know, a lot of the fan base, including the Philippines, has learned that I don't hate you. I'm just, I just tell you the truth and that's out of respect. So I actually did see a lot of this coming, unfortunately. I hope you guys understand that I don't like to be right. Truly, I don't. I don't want to be right. Consider me the safety manager of pageantry, okay? 
I am OSHA. <laughs> For those of you who don't know who OSHA is, OSHA is the people that like oversee oil drilling stations, right? I am your safety manager. I see problems and I'd let you know what the problems are so that they may be addressed. The one thing you never want your safety manager to be is right. Never let your safety manager be right. If your safety manager says, hey, you guys need new this, you need safety gear, you need new masks, you need new gloves, whatever, you never want your safety manager looking down at you in a hospital bed talking about, see, I was right. I don't want to be right. I want to point out issues so that they are fixed, so that they are handled. So when I saw this issue coming with Miss Russia, I anticipated that the Miss Universe organization was just gonna throw their hands up and not do anything about it, but I'm a little bit sad that she even really had to go through that. I'm a little bit sad that Miss Ukraine had to even deal with the presence of Russia because you guys may not understand, but I totally get how angering that can be on her behalf. I wish the situation could be avoided for everyone involved, but that's not how life works, so we're here. But hopefully we learn. That's why we're here and we discuss and we hang out together. In the comment section below, let me know what you think about this situation regarding Miss Russia's interview that has been put online from the insider. What do you think about what she had to say and the hardships that she faced? What should be the future roadmap that future Russian competitors should follow when going to international competitions because in the political climate with these organizations being the businesses that they are, of course they have to be very careful about these political landmines. So how do the Russian competitors navigate these? What about the Ukrainian competitors if they are able to continuously make it out of their still surviving country? How, to, how do they navigate you know, the murky waters of dealing with Russian competitors or addressing the situation when they are inevitably asked, because I promise you, Miss Ukraine is getting the same questions as well, though she's getting more sympathy and empathy from the world. She's getting the questions. How do you think pageant competitors can better prepare themselves to be spokeswomen for their countries? Because obviously we've all seen a lot of these women are kind of in it for personal gain and are not readily prepared for the job that they've applied for. <laughs> they just, a lot of them don't seem ready. Like how do they better prepare themselves to understand what they're in for? Those of you very intelligent pageant fans, longtime pageant fans, sound off in the comments section about these questions because I am curious to see what you also have to say. Maybe you guys have some good ideas. Maybe you guys have a further conversation that we can discuss in a future video. Just let me know. Also make sure you hit the like button so that we can game the algorithm because even though a lot of people don't pay attention to pageantry, we still make a lot of noise. So do the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And remember, I love you and I will miss you, but you know I will be back in a future video. Bye.